It appears we need to seriously start taking the reports about Nintendo's rest of this year serious because while we had a report after E3, you know, the E3 report came out and Nintendo was stated to not be participating and then Video Game Chronicle gave some context to that, lots of people rightfully pointed out that Video Game Chronicle doesn't have a sterling track record with these sorts of reports and I never really made an individual video about this topic. Well, it turns out that yes, Nintendo very likely is gonna have very little in the way of system sellers moving forward the rest of 2023. We have to discuss what this means because now IGN, you know, the one of the most reliable places for this type of stuff out there has corroborated the report and we need to talk about it. <laughs> So first, let's jump right into what the hell IGN had to say in their latest update. So it says IGN understands that Nintendo and Xbox were initially interested in having a presence at the event, but they had to pull out, and this is about E3, for the reasons unrelated to the show itself. Video Game Chronicle has since reported that Nintendo opted to not take part in the event due to a light second half release schedule not justifying the event space information that IGN can corroborate. So what does that mean? It means that IGN has heard exactly what Video Game Chronicle has heard, and that is that Nintendo is not going to have a massive presence in the second half of this year with big games. And this is why Nintendo isn't going to be at E3. So the problem isn't the E3 event. The problem is Nintendo just doesn't have anything. Now, we think about this. There were rumors and reports, you know, dating back to last year that Tears of the Kingdom was going to be the final system seller for Switch this year. And people were like, oh, no, 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 no. It, 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 the report said major. Well, I consider Pikmin 4 to be a major game. Well, you might consider that. But let's say it sells 3 to 4 million. Pokemon sold 10 to 20. Zelda sold 30 million. Animal Crossing 40. Those are system sellers. Those are the games that people talk about when they say major games. They're talking about games that are system sellers, and it appears that there's nothing wrong with the E3 event itself. What's wrong is that Nintendo doesn't really have the big games to warrant spending the money to be at E3. I think that that's a rather fascinating take, because it was one thing when Video Game Chronicle said it, now that IGN has backed it up, and by the way, so have now three other different outlets, it's gotten to the point that we need to honestly consider the fact that, you know what, after Tears of the Kingdom, it's going to be a pretty light year. Now, does this mean it'll be a disappointing year? That's going to depend on the individual because Nintendo's going to have games, right? There might be another Mario sports game. There could be a Mario and Luigi game. There could be, obviously, Pikmin 4. We know that. There could end up being a Pokemon game at the end of the year. And, yeah, we could get F-Zero and Metroid Prime HD and a bunch of GameCube remasters, right? That could be something that happens in the second half of this year. And many people might look at that and go, that's a really good lineup. I like this slate of releases. This is really cool. Oh, look, they dropped another Kirby game. Let's be excited. But the thing is about that is none of those would be considered system sellers. So it would just be Nintendo floating. They are floating while still releasing a bunch of games you might want to play, but may not be the kind of things that get new people to want to pick up a system. So that is the thing to consider when looking at these reports. It's not that there won't be games. It's that there's not a Mario game, right? We can pretty much rule out the idea of a brand new Mario game coming this year, 2D or 3D, because both of those are system sellers. Uh, we can pretty much rule out Mario Kart, of course, uh, maybe even a new Luigi's Mansion. You could sort of rule that one out because now Luigi's Mansion sells 10 million copies, so you could probably rule that one out. There's a lot of things you could basically rule out as Nintendo starts to rely more on GameCube remasters, which the first person to tell us that this was going to happen was Emily Rogers last year, one of her final rumors. She is now retired, but one of the final things she threw out there as an insider was that Nintendo was going to do a 3DS and rely on a bunch of ports and remasters to end the year, and they are going to, in this case, rely on GameCube as a library that they can remaster into HD, widescreen, etc. So that was what she said, and we haven't seen that come to fruition yet, right? We haven't seen the announcement of those games, but maybe that's what's going to happen at this upcoming Nintendo Direct. Also, as I said before, this sort of leans into the idea that Nintendo is gearing up for that new hardware in 2024, because why would they hold back on system sellers? Because they're going to use them to sell a 
new system in 2024. So that is kind of the thing. Remember those other reports out there, again, from last year, that Nintendo is just sitting on games? Well, maybe they're sitting on a new Mario game. They're sitting on other games because they want to repeat that 2017 where you had that killer 9-month, 12-month window of release of games that ended up launching Switch into the stratosphere, and they might want to repeat that. Just be happy that Tears of the Kingdom isn't one of those games that they've delayed, at least at this point. I know some of you guys are still worried. You're like, normally when a game doesn't have this sort of information about three months out, it's because it's going to get to... Just wait for the Direct. Just wait for the Direct, okay? Wait for this month. This month will tell us if it's delayed or not. It'll say in the Direct if it's delayed. I doubt it's delayed. I'm sure it's still going to be the big game that they're leaning on to keep system sales going through the summer. Maybe something Pokemon in, in the fall. But guys... Relax, okay? Relax. I don't think Tears of the Kingdom is going anywhere, especially if the second half of this year is going to be so light. Well, the reason it would be so light is because of new hardware. So, I don't know. There you go. That's what I have to say about this topic. You guys let me know what you think down in the comments below. Are you disappointed that Tears of the Kingdom might be the final big, major exclusive game? Do you think it is the right move? Last time they did something like this, by the way, was with the Wii. Skyward Sword was like the last major release difference then is they didn't have a bunch of ports and remasters and other things coming out along the way to keep things going so skyward sort of tanked and it was you know the wii was already tanking before it was a just a bad release timing for that game but but here we are i don't think this is a bad release time for tears of the kingdom because they still have momentum but if this was like spring of next year that they were dropping it that might not be great timing but it's not spring of next year it's may of this year I'm excited. I think you should be excited too. I want to thank everyone for tuning in. And I want to pose another question to the chat because as we talk about directs and as we talk about stuff, we got a podcast tonight featuring HMK. Glad to have him back. Mandy Lee plays, Andres Restart, Mike Odyssey, Eric Moore, and yours truly. The thing is, I want we're gonna have a, a, a three-part conversation tonight, right? We're gonna be talking about directs, you know, doing some predictions. We're gonna be talking about uh E3. We're also gonna be talking about this idea of the second half of uh, Switch being pretty light of this year, what it means, new hardware, what's going on. What I find interesting is trying to debate over what your ideal lineup of ports and remasters would be. Because we haven't really had that conversation of, we just kind of assumed, oh, maybe that report was wrong. Maybe they're not. Nintendo's going to have major games in the second half, of course. But if they don't, what is going to be that lineup that's going to make you happy even without those games? And that's what I want you guys to tell me down below. What ports and remasters from GameCube or other systems, maybe Wii, do you think make sense and could fill out a lineup here? Personally, by the way, Xenoblade Chronicles X getting ported over, I think would be a really great get this year. Please do it. I think that it's just time. It's time for us to get it. Xenoblade's popular. There's going to be DLC for Xenoblade Chronicles 3. Let's let's get Xenoblade Chronicles X ported over. Why not? It's time. Anyways, let me know the games you think could fill out the rest of the year from a port slash remaster list, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.